Hey everyone, Ms. Phillips here, and today we're going to go through our trumpet lesson. So today we're going to build off of all the things that we've been doing in class. Our perfect whole note, moving from our G note to our C note, our middle to low, making sure we're set up correctly on our trumpet, and making sure we're reading our music in the correct way. So let's start up with our music stand. If when we're reading off of our music stand, or it could be um, maybe your desk or even your computer if you're reading a PDF, making sure that our seat and the thing that we're reading off of is at the appropriate height where we can have our feet flat on the ground and we're sitting nice and straight with our sternum up high and we have our great band posture and our band chair, right? No gaming chairs with the, with the arm rests all the way up top, right? We wanna keep all that out of the way so we can comfortably and correctly play our instrument. We want our music stand or whatever we're reading our music off of to be up high enough that your music is at eye level and you're look, looking directly at your music or at me and making sure that your bell is above the lip of that music stand. So that means you're probably gonna have to lift up your trumpet just a little bit higher than you want. Remember we want it slightly below parallel, not super high and not super low, right? Cause that shuts off our ability to breathe and also our ability to comfortably play in our mouthpiece, okay? So just because we're not in person right now and we're not meeting through teams, doesn't mean that we can do anything funky with our hands on the instrument, okay? So first we wanna make sure that our first three fingers, one, two, three, are resting right on top of those pearls, our keys, right, resting right on top of there, even though we're not pressing any of them down right now. And then our pinky, we can tap our pinky on top of that pinky pedestal, that's what I like to call it, or you can call it a hook too, right? We want it right on top enough where we can just tap it there. And then our thumb of our right hand is resting underneath that lead pipe. And then our left hand, we got our ring finger through that third valve ring. Our pinky's just hanging out for the ride and our left thumb is holding on to those valve casings nice and nice and taut. Okay, so now we're gonna look at our first two pitches that we've learned. We've learned our middle G. And our low C. In order to play that middle G, we need to make sure that we're aiming our air straight forward through our mouthpiece. And that's the note that we're playing right now, that G in the staff that we learned in our flashcard test just a couple of weeks ago. Next, with our low note here, our low C, notice we've got that ledger line showing us that note is below the staff. And remember, we want to aim our air upward. It's a little counterintuitive, right? To get a lower note, we want to aim our air a little bit upward in our mouthpiece, just slightly. So those are the two notes that we're working on today. What these two notes are called are different partials, P-A-R-T-I-A-L, partial, right? And so that's basically a fancy music word to tell us that we're not pressing any buttons to get any different notes. We're just changing our air direction, what our mouth does to get a different note. So this G and C are just different partials of the same fingering. So those are our partials. So today we're gonna to start with some together playing, which means you and I play together at the same time on our perfect whole note, right? Our whole note that takes up four beats in our measure. We're gonna start with our middle G, so that the middle note that we're used to playing. Now, if you're getting a lower note, remember that we want that air to go straight through the middle of our mouthpiece, not up or down, but just straight through, okay? So while we're doing this, remember our, in our brain, as we get our foot tip tip tap in, we want to make sure that in our brain we're thinking one, two, three, four, stop. Just like we did today with our ta counting in class. Remember we connected our ta on our very most boring measure. Ta, 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 ta. Right? We're going to do the same thing here with one long ta, making sure we all stop together. Just as you do when you say the word ta, we're going to use our tongue. Remember the tip of the tongue to the top of the teeth right there behind our front teeth. We're gonna use our tongue to start all of those notes. Do we end the notes with our tongue? No, we don't. Remember that we breathe in to turn the, or excuse me, but to end those notes, right? So count off with me. I got my metronome going here. Don't worry about yours. Mine's gonna be just fine. So anytime you hear that metronome, what are we doing with our foot? Down, up, down, up, down, up. Nicely done. So here we go. We're gonna do our perfect whole note on that middle G. Count off with me. 
Count it with me, count it now. Down, up, ready, set. Use almost all of the air you have. Get rid of it, it's free. Get all the way to stop and then breathe in. Here we go, same thing using all of the air you've got. Down, up, ready, set. Are you ending the note with your tongue or with your breath? Try it one more time and use all of that air. Get rid of it. Down, up, ready, set. Again, down, up, ready, set. Awesome. Now, when we're thinking, remember, we're thinking in our brain when we're playing our perfect whole note. One, two, three, four, stop. Don't stop your air until you get to that stop, right? Until you've ran out of air. Now, if you've ran out of air before then, the chances are you aren't taking a big enough breath. So make sure you're taking a large, big, silent breath when you, when you feel that cold air at the bottom of your throat like this not instead of a shallow breath where you bring up your shoulders, right? We want to avoid that. We want a nice big full breath that goes all the way down to our tummy, right? Or to our diaphragm, that's the fancy word, right? And so the biggest breath you can comfortably make all the way to that stop. All right, let's try it again. Remember our trumpet is slightly below parallel here. again. Here, here we go. Again, with a bigger breath. And down, up, ready, set. Again, and down, up, ready, set. Can you play it louder? Try one more time. Down, up, ready, set. Now notice that my body isn't getting tight or clenching up, right? Everything should be nice and relaxed so that the air can leave our body and make its way through our instrument, our trumpet. Our elbows are free and not clamped or squeezed in against our body. So let's do this a few more times. Count off with me, ready and go. Down, up, ready, set. Use that fast air, get it all the way across the room. Drill through the wall with your air. Again, down, up, ready, set. One more time, ready, and down, up, ready, set. Ah. Nicely done, everyone, good job. So now we're gonna do a little bit of I play, you play. And remember that the whole point of I play, you play is for you to compare your sound to mine. Are you playing as loud as me? Are you playing the same pitch or the same note, or the same positioning? Use your ear or the tuner through our online free metronome to figure that out, or a combination of the both even better, right? So at the beginning, we're gonna start on our middle G, but eventually I'm gonna to start to add in this dude, our low C or our lower partial, right? So pay close attention with your ears and make sure you're playing the exact same note, the same volume and the same length as me. Again, always tapping our foot with that metronome. Here we go with me. I play, you play. And my turn, your turn. Ready and go. Nicely done, everyone. 
So when we're playing our I play, you play, and my notes go all the way to the end of that measure, one, two, three, four, stop, or at the very end I did one, two, three, four, stop. Either way, my whole note or my half note should be touching the very end of that measure, and then yours should start right when my sound stops. All right, so I'm playing my whole note and then you immediately take over. So what should we should be hearing is ta 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 instead of ta 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 uh, right, there's a huge difference there. We want to make sure that all of these notes are connecting. Okay, let's do that a few more times with our middle G and our low C. Remember, we're still in first position. None of our pearls or buttons are pressed down. I play, you play. Listening for our air, for our volume, and for our pitch. Here we go. My turn. Uh... done. I'm sure we're probably feeling a little bit of burn up here, right, in the arms and in our shoulders. And that's good. That's good stuff. We want to make sure we're getting nice and prepared to pull up our instruments for our long songs, right? So we want to make sure we're building those muscles and building that endurance now. So nice job. Great job so far. So now I'm going to share my screen. If I can get this to work here. Um, and I'm going to be looking at our essential elements book here, okay? It says I'm screen sharing. It's been a while since I've used this software. Okay, yes, I am. Awesome. So now let's look and see what this looks like in terms of our essential elements book and our musical staff here. So what we were just playing is that middle G and then we were playing that low C, right? The same positioning, the same fingering, right? All those open notes. Notice here on our diagrams, those three little circles, those are our fingerings, right? Or our positionings. And so here we have our third position, our F, our fourth with our E, all right, and then D and then C. So let's play a couple of these with our musical staff so we can get used to looking at that. So let's play number two together. Again, making sure that our tongue is very active in this, using the tip of the tongue to the top of our teeth and articulating each one of these notes. So let's start with number two. Again, our trusty metronome is going in the background. And so what that means is your toe is going down, up, down, up. Here we go. Let's play number two together. You and I playing at the same time. And down, up, ready, set. Breathe. And down. Nicely done. Remember that our tongue is just going to be using one little itty bitty taste bud, right, to articulate at the very tip of the top of our teeth, right? We don't want it to sound stopped or jolted in between each note like this. This is not what we want. So aside from my accidental double tonguing there, you can hear how it almost is like I'm sticking my tongue inside the mouthpiece. We don't want that at all. We want just the tip of our tongue to touch the very back of our front teeth, right? And it's just like that water spigot, right? Or the water spout in your sink in your house or maybe your garden hose, right? We just wanna pass our hand over. We don't wanna completely stop that flow of water. In this case, that flow of water is our air. Let's try that one more time with our metronome. 
and remembering on that fourth beat rest that we're breathing in a nice full deep breath here we go count off with me count off with me ready and go down up ready set breathe awesome now let's do the same thing but in our first position fingering we're going to do number four in essential elements number four same thing in our first position fingering here we go and down up ready set how our fingerings and our positionings changed in that one, right? Two's a team, we got two notes. Look at it again. We got our first position F, or excuse me, our third position F, and then our first position G. Starting in third and then going to first, here we go. Number four, again, count off with me, ready, go. Down, up, ready, set. Change your fingering. Try it again. Here we go. Make sure to change that fingering in the rest. And down, up, ready, set. To first position. Woo! Nicely done, everyone. So as we go on through the rest of these exercises throughout the next couple of weeks, we're gonna add on more notes and start getting used to reading those on our staff here. So you guys did awesome. Remember to a quick recap here, we have our middle partial and our lower partial. Our air for our middle needs to go straight through our mouthpiece and our air for our low needs to slightly aim upwards, right? And all about the air direction is gonna change which partial we get. When we're playing these longer note values, we want to make sure we go all the way to the end of that measure. One, two, three, four, stop. And doing the same for our half notes and even our smaller note values as well. All right. I think that covers everything we wanted to cover today. Um, I'm so happy that you guys made it to the end of this video. And so for your assignment, I would love for you to leave something so I know that you watch this video at the end of your assignment. So your check for understanding is those three sentences of something you learned from this video. And at the end of that, I would love for you to put um, hmm, your favorite candy. Talk about that. I think mine is, I love a good like salted caramel. So if you guys can, <laughs> I know that you didn't really need to know that, but I do love a good salted caramel for any of you who are wondering, all right? So if you could put your um, favorite candy at the end of your check for understanding assignment, so I know you made it to the end of this, that would be pretty cool. All right, I hope you guys have a great day and I cannot wait to see you guys in class next week. I hope you have a good one. Bye trumpeters, see you guys later.